Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day in the Pyrenees. So I woke up this morning with the intention of shooting sunrise somewhere, but uh, I didn't get anywhere in time, and uh, the sunrise wasn't that awesome anyway. And now I'm at this place that is called Pont de España. I'm going to go on a little uh, short, sweet hike to a lake. I think it's Lac de Gaubi or Gobi. Since uh, it looks like it's going to be another clear and sunny day, I thought that it would be fun to challenge myself uh, and use a lens that I do not usually use and I never used before for landscape photography. And it's this one that you're seeing here. I think you've seen it before in some of my videos, but this is a vintage lens. It's a Minolta Rockor. And uh, this lens is actually one of Rachel's lenses, uh, but I use it every once in a while. It's a lens that was designed for a 35 millimeter film camera. I never used it for landscape photography because despite being an awesome lens, it's very, very nice. Uh, the focal length uh, on a crop sensor camera like my A6000 or A6500, uh, this lens becomes a pretty much a 90 millimeter lens so it's well within a telephoto range so it doesn't make it ideal for landscape photography supposedly i'm gonna be using it on my a6000 so there is not gonna be any kind of stabilization or anything the photos are gonna be black and white and square as usual and that's pretty much it let's see what uh, we can make with this uh, combo
All right, so this is the lake. Uh, I made it here a while ago and I've been enjoying myself and taking some photos, taking advantage of semi-decent light. Uh, the light is getting worse by the minute. Every once in a while a cloud passes by and blocks the sun a little bit, so everything gets a little bit better. But yeah, the light is pretty harsh. It's a terrible day for photography, but it's an awesome, nice day for everything else. The weather is perfect and the lake is super calm. It's beautiful. So yeah, just enjoying myself right now. I've been using this lens. It's been nice, but I, I find it quite limiting here in this spot because of course uh, you want to take the obvious shot that is the whole thing, the whole lake with the mountains and that, uh, that, that, that slope right there and the reflections of all of that in the lake. It's such a beautiful spot, but yeah, you cannot do that with this lens. And that's fine because uh, it forces you to think differently and come out, come out, of, come out of here with uh, different shots, different images that uh, probably not a lot of people have because uh, it's very tempting to, to use a very wide angle lens. Uh, at a place like this. So I'm gonna hang around here for a while, but now I'm gonna be looking for different subjects, uh, probably more close-ups of rocks or sticks or something like that. I don't know. We'll see what we can find. And yeah, and then just head down to the car. Hey, sorry. Oh yeah, beautiful, yeah. <laughs> Well, that was really fun. Uh, I love this lens. I love using it. I love the fact that it's completely manual. You have to focus here. There is no autofocus anywhere. I love that you have to change the aperture here. It feels good if, uh, using it. It feels, uh, it reminds me a lot of using film, of using a 35 millimeter camera. And that's a good thing. I think that manual focus is not a problem for landscape photography. Actually, it could be even a good thing. If you are under pressure or you have to focus on something that is moving, then yes, you will need autofocus. But uh, this lens for landscape photography or manual focus, sorry, for landscape photography is more than fine. I was shooting this lens on P mode, program mode, where the camera controls all the settings, ISO, shutter speed and aperture. But since it's a manual lens and I have to change the aperture here, it's pretty much like shooting in aperture priority. The camera can only change the shutter speed and the ISO. You have to watch the shutter speed that the camera chooses though, because the camera has no idea what you are using. Being a 90 millimeter lens and this camera doesn't have any kind of stabilization, you have to shoot at at least one 125, uh, probably one 200, 250th of a second. Uh, so you don't get blurry shots. One of the reasons why you would get blurry shots with this lens is because it's pretty heavy. It's uh, very small as you can see, but it's pretty heavy. It's built of metal and uh, when mounted on this adapter, the adapter is pretty light. So the whole thing, this whole combination feels unbalanced. It's very front heavy right here on this part. So it tends to tilt. So if you are just uh, handling with just one hand, it tends to do that. So it's better if you hold it with two hands. You already have to do that to focus or change the aperture, but yeah, not the most stable combination. It's not the sharpest lens, it's very soft, uh, wide open. I think you have to step it down to at least f2.8 or f4 
to start getting like decent results. But uh, I actually happen to, to like the look that you get when you shoot at f1.4 or f2. Everything is very soft and it's, it has that vintage look. It's not exactly like film look, but uh, I don't know, it doesn't feel like digital. It's not a look that is easy to replicate with a digital camera. So yeah, I kind of like it. This is not the first time that I use a vintage lens and a mirrorless camera, not at all. I've used a lot in the past and they are great. It's a generally cheaper way to get a good and fast glass. The only thing to keep in mind is that they are much better when used on full frame cameras because of the crop factor. As I said before, this is a 58 mil becomes a 90 millimeter. So it's very, very hard to get a wide angle lens on a cropped camera like this. Even if you get a 35 millimeter, that would be what, like a 52 millimeter equivalent. So yeah, if you wanna go wide, you have to look at lenses of 24, 20 millimeters, but they are usually heavier, more expensive, not as fast. And yeah, that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say about this lens. Uh, I would love to know if you have used vintage lenses on your mirrorless cameras before, or if uh, you plan on using them, uh, leave a comment. Uh, I would love to know. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.